Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here. And today we see the ring counter. All right. This is a ring counter. This is also sometimes called a shift register counter. All right. Why? Because this is a typical application of this shift register. Shift register counter. And we have not seen the registers yet but you know we have seen counters so we can tackle this problem all right this is another case of uh, what of a synchronous counter all right this is a synchronous counter which means the clock pulse is provided to all the flip-flops simultaneously all right let's say I have a four bit counter so for that I will have uh, to use how many flip-flops? Uh, four flip-flops. So let's say I'm using D flip-flops. This is Q0, Q0 complement, right? Then we have uh, D1, Q1 and Q1's complement, D2, the output Q2 and its complement, and the last bit that is d3 we have q3 and its complement fine now what do you have in this case i told you this is a synchronous counter so so uh, a clock pulse let's say represented by this blue color this is the external clock pulse and this is provided to all the flip flops at the same time and the bubble shows a negative and the arrow shows a edge triggering. So this is a negative edge triggered flip-flops. All right. Now what do you have? We also have the overriding inputs. All right. What are the overriding inputs? We have already seen the overriding inputs. Overriding inputs. What are these? These are also called direct inputs. These are the preset and the clear inputs. All right, and we have also seen that if the preset is zero, this would imply that the output is one. And if the clear is zero, this would imply that the output is zero. The output is one refers to setting the flip flop and the output is zero refers to resetting the flip flop. A detailed video on this particular topic, the overriding input, that is the clear and clear preset and clear is already present so you can watch it if you have not watched it in a detail over here we are not going into the detail of that this was the summary of that video that if the preset is zero the flip-flop is set and the output is one if the clear is zero the flip-flop is reset and the output is zero now these are called overriding inputs I am uh, overriding inputs I am uh, denoting it by ORI all right overriding input this could also be a clear, this could also be a preset. So have a look, this signal is coming and to the third flip-flop the clear signal is given. To the second flip-flop this clear signal, to the first this also and to the zeroth flip-flop the preset clear, the preset signal is given, alright? So this is the difference. To the first flip-flop, that is to the first, yeah, the D naught representing the flip-flop number first the preset input is given and to the rest second third and fourth the clear inputs are given all right and this is the case now the output this q naught this is connected to the input of the law this next preceding flip-flop all right similarly the output of this flip-flop is given to the next flip-flop and now to the of the second is given to the third like this okay now till here this circuit is of a shift register so what is the difference between a shift register and uh, this particular ring counter it is of the feedback and what is the feedback we've seen the feedback is what you take something from the output you store it you give it back to the input the feedback is this q3 this q3 is taken from here it's given back here at d naught now this is the difference between ring counter and shift register. 
difference between ring counter and shift register is of the feedback that is what q3 so let me write it in the brackets q3 all right in shift register we don't have this given all right now we know from our previous knowledge that uh, the number of states is equal to 2 to the power n number of states is equal to 2 to the power n where n is what n is the number of flip flops used all right or n is the number of bits you can say where the number of bits is equal to the number of flip flops used <coughs> sorry but here in this case this formula is not valid in the ring counter we have another formula this formula is wrong and over here the number of states is equal to the number of flip flops used all right or you can say the number of bits all right as the number of flip flops is equal to the number of bits which was previously represented by n so in this case we have four flip flops which means we will have four states all right okay now if this uh, overriding input is provided a low signal let's say this is made low it was high at some stage it is made low for some time and again high so for the time that it is low it would result in this pre-setting this setting this flip-flop and the output generated would be one isn't it so because if the preset is zero these are active low signals all right so this was made zero so the output would be one if this clear is made zero the out this output would be zero this output would be zero this output would be zero is that fine all right now we have what let's make let's say i draw the truth table for it okay so so we have the overriding input ori we have the clock pulse we have uh, q not q1 q2 and q3 yes q not Q1, Q2, and Q3. All right. So in this case, you have what? The overriding input is zero. All right. This is low, which means this is zero. Okay. So and the clock pulse. Whatever be the value of the clock pulse, this is a don't care. And whatever be the values of the D at that time, the output would result in Q not equal to one. Q1, Q2, and Q3 equal to 0. Now you do what? You make this uh, high, all right? The overriding input is made high, which means the preset is high, the clear is high. So in that case, we know the flip-flop will be operating normally. And for the D flip-flop, whatever is the input, it is there at the output, all right? So now have a look. This 0 comes at the input over here, fine? this one now is connected over there so this would be an input for the next state which means the next falling gauge all right this zero would be the input for this one and this zero would be the input for this one and this zero is already gone over here now this is for this state when the first falling edge arrives all right this is when the first falling edge arrives fine what happens now q naught would be zero right this q naught is zero because the input is output is again equal to the out, input q1 would be equal to one right q2 would be equal to zero and q3 would be equal to zero isn't it so okay now for the next falling gauge where again the clock is high at this stage also right for the second falling gauge what do we have now this zero comes again over here right this zero goes to the input of d1 this q11 goes to d20 and this zero comes into d3 and this zero has already been mentioned over there this is for the second falling edge all right now have a look for d naught q naught would be zero 
fine for d1 q1 would be 0 d2 would be 1 as the input is 1 and d3 is 0 as the input is 0 again fine now for the third falling gauge the the, the overriding input is 1 all right the third falling gauge this 0 is over here 0 right this 0 is connected over here to 0 fine this 0 connected to this 0 to this 1 this so we remove this 1 and we place a 0 over here and this 1 is now connected to d3 fine and this has already been mentioned so now for the third falling edge this 0 comes out to be 0 at the output again fine this 0 comes out to be 0 at the output 0 for d q2 as well and we have a 1 for uh, for what for q3 all right so this was about the third falling edge now for the fourth falling edge what do you have for the fourth falling edge this is the fourth falling gauge all right this one is connected over here all right now this zero is connected over here so the red color let it be this zero is connected over here let it be and this zero finally is connected over here and this one has already been boarded a feedback over here to d naught fine now what do you have for the fourth edge q naught would be one as the input is one right d1 would be 0, d2 would be 0, and d3 is also 0 because the inputs are 0 in this case. So have a look now, we have started the repetition. So this is repeating, which means our concern is till this point, and you have a look till here. And we have got our four states. After this, this would repeat again like this, 0, 1, double 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, triple 0, 1, and again to 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is repeating in sort of a ring. Have a look. This is coming like this, and it goes back again like this to 1. So which means from here it goes back to 1, and again like this. So it's sort of moving in a circle, and that's why it's called the name ring counter. And why is it called the shift register counter? Because it is an application of the shift register has has similarities to the shift register now let me draw the the clock diagram all right so for that I don't need that much of space uh, so let's say I remove this fine okay so so this is enough space right so if I have the clock pulse like this this is let's say my reference line all right one falling gauge two falling gauge three falling gauge Four falling gauge, and I don't believe. Yeah, say four, four are enough for me. Right now, what do you have? Let's say the, this was the clock pulse. Okay, this was the external clock pulse. Now the overriding input. Initially, let's say it was high, and it's made low for a certain time, and then it's made high. So that is it. Okay, and also let me represent the falling edges of the clock pulse the external clock pulse right now so let us start our analysis with q naught all right with the q naught represented with this red color so whatever be the initial value let's say it's zero okay let's say the initial value was zero and when the overriding input becomes zero that is when the preset clear signal is applied to it it goes high at this stage fine at this stage it goes high and it stays high until the falling edge arrives so when the first falling edge arrives, Q0 goes to 0, right? For the, till the second falling edge it's 0, at the second falling edge it's again 0, till the third falling edge it's 0, and at the fourth falling edge it goes high again. All right? So this is for Q0. For Q1, Q1. Let's say initially it was 0 again and when the clear signal is provided, it still is 0, alright? So it goes high at the first falling edge, which means over here it will go high. Isn't it so? It is. 
whatever be the previous value right let's say let's say if the previous video was if the previous value was 1 so it go, it was 1 previously and when the when the clear signal is applied it comes to low it could also be like this or as i draw previously if the previous value is 0 it will remain at 0 when the clear signal is applied so the first falling edge it goes high right for the second falling edge it comes back to 0 right the third falling edge the fourth falling edge is 0 so it is 0 after this point all right now now for q for q2 For Q2, let's say whatever, in this case, let's say the initial value was 0, alright, the clear signal is applied, it's again 0. It goes high at the, at the second, at the second falling edge. So this is the second falling edge. Alright, this was the second falling edge. And, and then it comes low at the third falling edge, right? So the third falling edge is this one, it comes low and stays low. And finally, for, for Q3, for Q3, again, let's say considering the same case, let's say initially it was high. So when the clear signal is applied, it comes to low, all right? And it stays low till when? Uh, till the third falling edge, which means till here. Till here it has to stay low, all right? And it, stay, it comes high at the third falling edge, and then it stays high until when so we have not mentioned that all right after that the repetition occurs so that's all about it and one thing one thing this one this one that we had with the preset input this is called the presetted one sometimes presetted one why is this called a presetted one because we have it one because of the preset input all right if the preset input is not applied this is not going to be one so that's all about it that's all about the ring counter in the next video we see the johnson's counter you have any questions you feel free to ask them in the comment section and do subscribe to the channel so see you in the next video very soon till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you goodbye